What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jay Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we're back. And we have an update on uh, the WB continuing to make moves. Some we've been talking to you guys about for a while now, about what Zaslov wants to get rid of. We find it, though, sometimes confusing as to what they're greenlighting. I don't understand it, Brian. But it's just like I, 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 I don't, I don't know who's in this, these rooms you, and saying, you know, what's a good idea, and somebody and, and people around the room agreeing to this. Don't put me in that room. I'll be. I, Brian, what were your thoughts on the WB greenlighting yet another Constantine bringing back Keanu Reeves because that's always worked? What's what's going on? As the WB world turns, we're back. We're back, WB. Um yeah, lots going on. So since we last talked, um, Dan Lin is out. That didn't make it to the fifth. Yeah. People go back to our show. We 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 pumped the brakes on that a little bit. That rumor was hot. Yeah. We yeah. pumped the brake. We said, watch out. There's some complexity here with his production company and all that sort of stuff. Not to mention the stuff we're talking about here. And sure enough, deal falls apart. He won't. He didn't take the job. Sounds like they wanted him to take the job. Yeah. Sounds like they couldn't get. Now, the official reason was his production company. He didn't want to give that up, uh, which he would have had to do in order in order to join Warner Brothers Studio. That's certainly part of it. But when we see all of these other developments going on, I don't know, man. That, I mean. I think there's some people out there that'd be cautious about stepping into that seat when you see every it's not like it's not like David Zaslav came in, took everything DC and said, pause. Cross the board. Just pause. We don't know yet. That would have been completely defensible to say, like, we have maybe a couple of these films, we gotta release those too far down the path, but everything else, we're gonna take a step back. We're going to figure it out. That's what he said they're doing publicly. But as you said, there's a lot of decisions being made without a decision maker in that seat. So if I'm looking at that seat, I'm like, am I really going to be the one calling the shots? Yeah, or is somebody no. else going to be calling the shots when I try to call my shots? That's not a good situation. So let's talk about what you're talking about. Go ahead. Brian, Go ahead. Before, even be like, even for me, I'm no one. Let's say through some miraculous uh, gesture, <laughs> I, they would say, "Pablo, here, you you do this." If I'm saying if I'm going to do this, it has to be done, you know, sort of my way. Yeah, you, you would know? demand that in your contract. Exactly. I can't have any interference. I can't have you guys telling me, oh, it's too, you know, this is the way it's got to be because this is the way I think people are going to respond to this. And if you take that, that piece away and then the movie bombs because these changes that you wanted, that relationship is not going to last long. So I, 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 don't, I, I don't know, Brian. Constantine, why? Why? Oh, here's another thing that we can give ourselves a little credit for. Because when we first got wind of David Zaslav's first couple of moves, I think I said to you, I said, you know, this guy feels like he's running it back. Like, we're going forward in time. And it feels like a lot of the decisions this guy's making are like out of the 90s. And this is literally running it back. Now, this was not a terrible movie. 2005. So 2005, 
right? Pre Iron Man. I think Tracy likes this movie a lot. It's not bad. It's not bad. You know, it's one of those movies that if it comes out in 2015, it's probably a bigger deal because the genre is a bigger deal. So in 2005, it was like, and also think, you know, Keanu was pretty hot, right? Because he was coming off the Matrix trilogy. But his star has also, because of like John Wick and, and some of the stuff he's done in, in society, his profile is even higher today than it was then. So that's what I mean by it. this movie is probably 10 years too early. Uh, Tilda Swinton is in the movie. A young Shia LaBeouf before he falls off the train is in this movie. Um, it's not bad. Is it good enough to revisit 17 years later because it's become something of a cult classic on cable and on streaming? I would say no. Yeah. Because Z David Zaslav's definition of theatrical is he wants big. And I'm not convinced Constantine is big. I think it's okay. I think it can make you money on a moderate budget. But this is not, and certainly with Keanu at the stage of his career he's at now, this doesn't strike me as Constantine 2, 3, and 4 is going to become like a $2.5 billion franchise. Yeah. So what it feels a lot like is more of David Zaslav's living in the past. And Keanu's a star. That's what he is. He's a movie star. He's like, I've got a star. And I got a director in Francis Lawrence who did this, who did I Am Legend, who did Hunger Games. I got a name in the seat. And that's going to sell. Man, that's, I'm telling you, that's like 20-year-old thinking. Yeah. That, that's just not how, generally for the most part, that's not really how it rolls this, these days. Yeah. I mean, as you said, on its own, fine like whatever, taken with everything else that was cut that's moving forward, it just doesn't feel like a difference maker. And it doesn't feel like this is something that needed to become the priority that it seems to become. Yeah. Once again, Brian, this, this thinking of I have a star is what for me ruins or messes up the, the 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 superhero genre because it's about the star, not the character. And you have instances where it works. Look at uh, Tom Hardy; he was a star when he did Venom. But it it doesn't happen often. No, I mean I would argue Tom Cruise is the last person who you can do this with. Like who basically you put him on in a movie on the poster with a budget and it's worth something immediately because he's in it, no matter who he's playing. And even he's not infallible, but I think he and Tom Cruise has been doing it since the eighties. Like Yeah. Which and is I know some, I, I, I know there's some people out there are talking about oh but well King also did it. You know, I'm telling you, it, it was very few individuals that can pull this off i don't know if keanu i mean look at look at matrix four you know that joint even if you know, i wish it would have came out in the theaters I yeah i do too it came out, uh, it came out in well the it theaters. sort of did but yeah i know what you mean but um now you're you have zaslov who's making it blatantly clear he doesn't want to be in whatever contract that was signed. Um, it was a production deal with J.J. With Abrams, correct? Yes, it was. And for, well, how much? It was 600 mil or something like that? It was something big. But no, those production deals, it, it's not a guaranteed compensation. Um, it's basically like a, think of it as like a war chest for scripts and shows that, that the that the creator then submits. So as those shows come in and they get greenlit and produced, um, they talk into the, the amount that they've agreed to. But yeah, one yeah. of the things they canceled was J.J. Abrams' take on Constantine. And this is where I think it gets 
go ahead on your thing and I want to come back to that because this is where I think the picture that's forming gets controversial. Let's the, the, the Cape Crusader is just the huge uh, telltale sign of this happening because yeah. it just doesn't make sense for that to happen. Um, but Brian, why do you think he wants to get out of this deal? I, I know it's because of money. It's a, it's a lot of money that they signed this deal for and I, you know, they want to free up cash or whatever the case may be. What, what do you think is going on? Yeah, so I, I'm going to tread a little carefully here, but it, it goes back to something that I think is in the ether in the wake of Batgirl, in the wake of some of these other projects that have been canceled. There does seem to be a growing common denominator that people of color that representation is being kind of backpedaled at Warner Brothers. And that includes the, the board, C-suite. You know, everyone kind of looks the same up there right now in terms of age, demographic, ethnicity. So this came home again because did a little research. So JJ, the two, the two latest ones that were canceled is Constantine Reboot, Madame X. Both were DC properties. Mm -hmm. Crusader, obviously, we've talked about at length. The leads of both of the leads were never confirmed, but the actor who reportedly was going to be Constantine for J.J. Abrams was black, and the lead of Madame X was supposedly a person of color as well. So now we have not gotten the formal word that the J.J. Abrams Tanahasi Coates. Superman of color has been canceled, but you know that's coming. I mean, you know that's happening. But it's not, I mean, they're going to try to probably, they're probably going to try to pull a Homer Simpson into the hedge and not really make that big news, but that thing's going to disappear. Yeah. But I am just circling this for people. And I'm saying that, does anyone else notice that when it comes to new DC stuff, David Zaslav appears to be taking a fairly consistent direction with this. And he, and I said, at the, I said, I said it before. I think he is taking a quote unquote traditional view of mm -hmm. comics. And if people were a certain way in the comics, that's how that's he's going to cast them in his productions. Now, I think that's very interesting at a time where Disney and Marvel are clearly pushing the other way. They are clearly pushing representation to the point where they're getting criticism for it. Too much. <laughs> I don't think that's an accident, people. I do not. I'm not trying to slay David Zaslav. I'm simply trying to say the identity of what he's trying to make WB and DC. He is deliberately putting it in contrast with what Disney and MCU are doing. And that is one of the ways that they are starting to deviate. Not entirely, because, you know, Dwayne Johnson, obviously, um, you know, even like Jason Momoa, I mean, I, like, it's not 100%, but he inherited those. Those were not people he signed. I'm looking at only the decisions he's made subsequent to taking over. And there does seem to be a pattern and an intent to split from how Disney and Marvel, and it's interesting that JJ's projects all seem to be pushing in a manner that was more similar to what Disney and Marvel were doing, and he basically put a stop to that. Yeah, we said it a while back that this uh, that uh, the Bad Girl cancellation was going to be looked at a certain way, and the moves that have been made are bringing that out to light even more yep um like i said this is a sensitive subject we don't know anything yeah but these are the facts these are the choices and this goes back to the dan lynn situation because these are the choices being made for the person who is going to ultimately sit in this chair they don't get to come in and say you know, I want I want to keep Cape Crusader. They don't get to say that. That's done. Oh man, 
before we uh end this discussion do you think do you think brian and this is way off topic but this act just proved to me that jason momoa is not coming back for aquaman 3. oh i know what you're gonna say go ahead i know what you're gonna say pull the, pull the samson on us yeah go ahead he yeah. shaved his head the new beginnings he says no way it's coming back for Aquaman 3. It's done. But that's our show. <laughs> Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about what the WB is doing and up to. Uh, do you see the same things that we're seeing? Do you think, I mean, do you think we'll ever see a Jon Stewart? Do you think we'll ever see uh What's this character icon? Do we see those characters? We certainly get in a blue beetle. I don't know. What's out of we we we're pretty sure we are. I hope so, because they, they if they cancel that brand They letting that twist, man. I, I I this climate, why wouldn't you just come out and confirm it? I, I don't know why. The fact that the director is on social media basically saying don't don't cut don't cut our film kind of tells you they haven't really been reassured formally, which is kind of disturbing. And the movie has been shot. Yeah. Okay. No trailer yet, but it's done. They, they wrapped the day of, um, the, uh, they wrapped the day of comic-con. That's why they didn't have anything at comic-con. They were wrapped. That was their last day of shooting. Although they should, they could have had a trailer, but they, they were there on, they were down. I think it was in Puerto Rico. They were, fin they were finishing up. Yes. Um, but yeah, that would be very disappointing if they don't uh, move forward with Blue Beetle. I think uh, they have a star in their hands and a possible franchise. Uh, but it all depends on how they t do this movie. Um, but uh, still looking forward and interested and curious about seeing a Blue Beetle. Let us know in the comments below what you guys think of um, Blue Beetle possibly being canceled. Because um, that would be a tra tragedy. If they did that, I agree. Uh, at some point, Brian, we, do you wash your hands and say, you know, I'm not gonna, and then you see the Batman two coming out next. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, what do you do? I mean, it's tough. You know, we talked about the Matt Reeves situation. He he, something you know, but him getting a production deal kind of right after there were rumors that. There were some falling. There were some issues between him and Zaslav about bringing Batman into whatever DC first they were proposing. Which again goes to my point of why are they proposing anything if they don't have the person in the seat? Why are they already making those decisions? Like what? What's like what's they can't the help run? themselves? Yeah. <laughs> like what? You, like so basically, you're like the person I'm going to hire has to come in and accept every deci major decision having already been made. Nobody, nobody of any quality is going to take that seat yeah, if that's the case. Man. Yeah. So it's just it get, it gets more confusing. Even in the even in the quest to save cash, which they clearly need to do. The only, like I said, we've pointed out the only consistency that we can kind of see, and I do think the JJ angle explains Cape Crusader, which is an otherwise inexplicable decision. It's the only thing that makes sense is that he basically, J.J. Abrams was one of the creators behind that show and David Zaslav ain't going to do business with that guy. And that was it. Brian, given all the possible issues that they can run into with the DCIP if they decide to build their universe and what we seem to see as them being very traditional with their characters and who they where they're from what they look like and because of the situation that they're in now in terms of you know needing cash or whatever the case may be wouldn't it make sense brian for staslov to again i'm i think we've talked about this but i want to hear if you're thoughts about it have changed with regards to David Saslov asking the question. 
how much do you think this DCIP is worth? Well, we can sort of guess, right? Because we know that Disney paid $4 billion for Marvel back in 2008 or nine. Yeah. That's like 2008 or nine is depths of the financial crisis. So that was already like a discount. And it's been obviously one of the greatest steals ever, which DC would know. Now, DC Comics, I'm not well-versed on the business of the physical comics, but my understanding is that they've, they've been struggling. Which is not new tech. Comics go through this all the time through their history. There's always Marvel and DC have struggled, but supposedly DC Comics is struggling. It doesn't matter. The characters alone in the modern media with what you can do with them, I think, I mean, minimum 10 billion, minimum. I don't even, I, I would think it's more, but I would say like to even just have Zaslav not hang up on you instantly it's it's 10 billion because i'm just taking the four again i'm taking the four billion from 15 years ago we now know what the mcu gave you so you that basically tells you what the financial possibility of it is so you're going to start the bidding at multiples of marvel because you're going to say look at that and oh by the way the characters that marvel used to make that universe do not compare to the status of Batman, of Superman. Like we have the bigger characters as a brand to start with. So I don't know, 10 billion, 12, 15, it, it's a big number. Like if, yeah, if you wanted to solve your cash flow issue instantly, put up a for sale sign. But as a standalone studio, if you sell it, I don't, know that warner brothers hbo and hdtv that's a much a weaker and it even as bad as dc is is still brings in some of the most attention and biggest revenues of the things they have even in the messy state that they're running it